Hey everybody, what's going on? Well, happy Sunday, and it's actually pretty nice out today, thank God. Yesterday was probably some of the craziest rain I've seen in quite some time. If you, if you joy, uh, joined us for the live stream yesterday, it was a uh, pretty crazy rain. I think over two inches of uh, two inches of rain fell in New York City. There was some pretty heavy flooding, particularly in Central Park. Uh, I think that little connection from the west side of Central Park to the east side was totally flooded out. And you also had a lot of basement flooding too. Um, you know, it is a little bit cold. I think it's about 40 degrees. It's supposed to get up to a high of about 45. It's only 12.20 p.m. in the afternoon here on this beautiful Sunday. Um, I'm going to go to the Upper West Side. I have an appointment up there. I thought I would uh, take you guys along for the ride. So we're going to do one lap around Central Park South. Then I'm going to head all the way to the Upper West Side of Manhattan. We're going to go to the 80s, uh, 83rd Street and Central Park West to be exact. Um, so give us a minute and happy Sunday, everybody. We'll get started shortly. Let me clip the microphone on here. Even though it's sunny, it's still a little cold out, unfortunately. But what's up? Good to see everybody. Beautiful day in New York. And uh, yeah, let's let's get started here. Let's exit out the Columbus Circle. I should say kind of uh, entrance here. Now this is going to provide you a really good perspective of what the city looks like during the day. Oftentimes we do the live streams at night. So these are the Deutsche Bank Towers. You can see quite clearly during the day. This big black building here is One Central Park West. That is the Trump International Hotel and Tower. So you could purchase condo units there. You can stay in a hotel. And there's also a Michelin star restaurant, Jean Georges. This building is really one of my favorites during the day. It's nicknamed the Limestone Building or 15 Central Park West. Look at this pigeon. Anyway, there's really bright yellow ones over there. Daniel, what's going on? Abdullah, thanks for joining us. And you know what's good? The lawns are coming in and I think they look really great. Um, obviously the Central Park uh, conservation people do a really good job of prepping the lawns for the main spring and summer season. I'm excited to see how the sheep meadow is gonna turn out. That's all the way to the north. It's kind of, uh, I would say if you enter on 72nd Street and walk down about two blocks, you'll hit right into sheep meadow. Now, aside from Central Park, uh, we do have some pretty exciting news as it relates to Bryant Park. Okay, now Bryant Park obviously has the Winter Village that is all taken down now and they've installed the grass. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but if you look really, really closely at the grass, you can kind of see how it's all laid out in squares. They actually install this, right? So this is new sod, I guess you could call it. And two nights ago, they delivered the grass for Bryant Park and they roll it out in these huge uh, drum rolls essentially and they roll out the grass and they let let the grass settle and sit and in about two weeks hopefully that'll be open for people to you know kind of hang out on the main lawn at Bryant Park kind of be interesting to see the transition all right so 
We're exiting the park now. This is 59th Street, Columbus Circle. Lots of tourists out today, obviously, because it's finally nice. And let's make this left on Central Park South and just walk down to the east side for a bit just to get some perspective on the city while the sun is out. You can see 157 in the Steinway Tower here. They look beautiful. Sam Ams has rolled that grass. Indeed, my friend. Thanks for joining us. It's still a little bit windy out. You know, hopefully as April rolls in, it'll be high 50s and low 60s almost every day. Fingers crossed. I'm sick of the rain and the wind. It's been crazy, crazy amounts. The trees are still pretty barren, but over the next few weeks, I mean, this is going to look like a sea of green here. If you've ever been up on a higher floor in any of the buildings surrounding Central Park, as you see that transition, when you could pretty much look down and see every little aspect of Central Park, as you transition into the spring and in the summer, uh, if you're up in any one of these buildings, you could actually go up into the Deutsche Bank Tower if you're staying at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. It just looks totally different because you're not able to see inside the park. You're just able to see the canopy of all the trees. Yesterday on the stream, we were talking about some interesting real estate developments uh, that are going to be going up in New York City. For those of you who weren't able to join yesterday's stream, uh, Extel, right? One of my favorite developers in New York, CEO is Gary Burnett. They just released their official renderings of the one and only 858th. It's either, se it's, I think it's 758th, I forget. But check it out, it's called the Torch Building. And they're setting a Q2 2027 completion date. The thing is unbelievable. Now, it's gonna be mostly hotels, 850 room hotel, an observation deck, and a ride attraction at the very top. Also gonna to have private VIP clubs, two restaurants overlooking the city, uh, Really, it's going to be an amazing, amazing development. Uh, and it's the same developer who built this building here. Now, I'll try to throw the picture on the screen just so you can see what it's going to look like. If you look to the right-hand side of your screen, that's it. Uh, it's called the torch. It kind of resembles what you would see in like Abu Dhabi, things like that. Dubai, very Middle Eastern. It's pretty cool. I was uh, doing some research into the investment pipe, or I should say the development pipeline in New York, and it's going to be unbelievable. Uh, the buildings that are going to be coming up over the next five years are going to totally revolutionize and transform the skyline of New York City. So check it out, Xtel's brand new development right off of Times Square on 8th Avenue. It is going to be called The Torch. Now, as the streams progress, we'll, we'll go into some of the newer developments that they're also going to be building on uh, closer to the Hudson Yards. I believe it's Wynn Resorts, or Wynn is... Uh, um, you know, expected to, to uh, 
build a huge casino, residence as well, hotels. Not too sure how I feel about that, but. Hey, Brawl of Cavs. I always wonder how do they find the space to build these towers every year? It's really difficult. And, you know, a lot of people think that when they look at these huge super talls, you know, somebody just came up with a plan a year ago and threw it up. Sometimes this takes decades, quite literally, to assemble the air rights. It's a process called assemblage. So you can't just buy a plot of land in New York and build as high and as tall as you want. You need to own the appropriate air rights to do so, and a lot of times it's like playing Monopoly. You need to slowly and steadily accumulate that from neighboring buildings. I'll give you an interesting example as we're looking at Alwyn Court. Now, the new Citadel Securities Tower, as well as 270 Park, well, we'll just talk about the new Citadel Tower that's going to be going up on Park Avenue. Um, they actually had to purchase air rights from the Catholic Diocese at St. Patrick's Cathedral in order to build to the heights and the dimensions that they actually wanted to build. So it's a very, very difficult process, as you can imagine. It's kind of like playing a big game of Monopoly and poker. Because if I'm a developer and I go to a neighboring building and say, hey, can I buy your air rights? You know, the neighboring building is going to be like, uh, why? You're probably planning something really special. So they're going to jack up the price of those air rights. So it's going to be very difficult. So you have to do this strategically over time, incognito, so to speak. Um, this is Central Park Tower. That's the tallest building on Billionaire's Row. That was also done by Extel. But, you know, the pipeline is pretty robust uh, for new construction in the city. The only problem is the pipeline for new residential construction is not as robust uh, as I'd like to see, particularly on the rental side. 57th Street and 7th. This is Carnegie Hall. Yeah, Clarence Jackson, yeah. JP Morgan uh, headquarters as well, 270 Park Avenue. Yeah. And you know, yeah. we spoke about this before, but you know, in the news and in the media, you'll read all these articles about you know, the uh, turmoil and the turbulence that the New York City real estate market is going through. And it, and that's true. Uh, but it's very very it's like a bifurcated market because a lot of the Class A towers are actually doing very well. Like Hudson Yards, 50 Hudson Yards is the new headquarters of BlackRock. I know that KPMG moved their headquarters over from the east side to the Hudson Yards as well. EY is over there. So there's a lot of things happening. Like a lot of things happening, despite what you hear. Hey, four, five, six is can they buy air rights from anywhere in Manhattan? Um, not from anywhere. I think it has to be within specific zoning restrictions. I'm not too sure, 100%. And you also can't build as high as you want in Manhattan because it de really depends on the, the bedrock. So if you look at a map of Manhattan, right, if you go to Google Maps or you go to, uh, not the street view, or Google Earth, you can kind of hover over it. You'll notice how, you know, just south of Central Park, you'll have these huge skyscrapers. And then after Penn Station, it kind of goes down and then lower Manhattan, it goes up again. That's not because developers just don't want to build super tolls in Soho, right? A lot of times the ground or the bedrock isn't secure enough or hard enough uh, for them to even build that tall. So a thing about 57th Street, which is like so prime, it can support the weight of a lot of these towers because it's the very, very strong kind of bedrock we have here.
One of the first phases in construction, they'll do like a soil sample for the lots. Let's cross the street so we don't have to go under the scaffolding. Now, if you want to see another really cool rendering, uh, just type in 350 Park Avenue. So 350 Park Avenue is going to be that brand new Citadel Securities Tower. And the first 54 floors of the building is going to be occupied by Ken Griffin and Citadel. Now, temporarily, they're at two they're at 425 Park Avenue. This is 157 again. So, I mean, you know, Park Avenue is going to look amazing over the next few years. You're going to have three brand new super talls just north of Grand Central Station. It's going to be awesome. 270 Park. 350 Park, and then the one that we already have, they just opened. Um, 425 Park. Four, five, six, is I really like 425. Yeah, there's a Bloomberg uh, article, not an article, but there's a Bloomberg kind of mini documentary that they made about that building. It's so state of the art, it's unbelievable. I would highly, highly recommend watching that. If you just pull up another YouTube tab and type in 425 Park, the developer gives you a full tour of the building. Um, apparently, it's one of the most eco-friendly buildings in New York City. But check this out, guys. It's cool to see these during the day to kind of get a different perspective. This is 111 West 57th Street, the Steinway Building, or Steinway Tower, also nicknamed the Stairway to Heaven. This is their retail space. Look at how massive this thing gets. This is the skinniest residential apartment building in the entire world. So we'll go over to the Apple Store and then we'll walk back around and then we'll head up to the Upper West Side. That's where I have to go. Hey, Sabrina Fair, what's going on? Thanks for joining us. It's finally sunny out for once. This is 6th Avenue. We're going to head back up and around. And maybe we'll walk all the way past the Dakota. Brolic calves is what's cheaper, the Upper East Side or the Upper West Side. It really depends really really depends on where you are but I'd say in general sense the Upper West probably See how windy it is if you look at the flag. 
Maybe we'll try to cut through Central Park. Usually the internet is not too great. Might as well try it out. This is my old building to the left. That was one of the best things about living here. Because you just walk outside and boom, you're right at Central Park. In the summer, it's fantastic. That's the Ritz Carlton we're looking at, 50 Central Park South. And you can see the Sherry Netherland all the way in the distance. Hey, what's up, AJ5? Probably not today. I was gonna stop by the Apple store real quick, but I don't think I'm gonna have time. I gotta get to the Upper West Side. Carol Brown says, so it's still pretty chilly out, at least the sun is out. Yeah, it's it's cold, I'm not gonna lie, it's cold out today. If the sun wasn't out, it would be absolutely ridiculously freezing. All right, we'll give it a try. Let's walk through Central Park. We'll see if our internet holds up. And that's my old spot right here, 106 Central Park South. This is a great building, by the way. If anybody's moving to New York and you want a, I'd say probably the most affordable building right on Central Park, this is it, 106 Central Park South. Great building. And it's also a full service building too. So you have 24 seven doorman, everything you can imagine is in there. I'll take you guys down so you can see the water. <laughs> Combat Jones. You know, I've never been into that Pret. Um, Man, this place is going to be amazing in the summer. I could already feel it. Uh, CAB chat around Bogota. This is ISIS going into Russia, but cannot make it to New York City with an open southern border. But let's talk about the weather. Sure. I mean, the weather is, I mean, it's not great, but it's improving. It's going to get to a high of about 47 today. But I was looking at the forecast a little bit further out into the week, and we should have two days of 60 degree weather, which I'm excited about. But look, April can be very volatile in terms of the weather in New York City. It could be a real hit or miss. April could be a total washout and pretty much just a total blowout. It could be raining every day, cloudy, overcast. So it's very, very volatile, the weather in New York City. You're really not gonna only get I should say, you're not gonna get guaranteed good weather until the end of May. Uh, sometimes, like even around my birthday, like Memorial Day, it could still be absolutely kind of dreary with rain and it can be very cold. It just depends. You know, even expanding a little bit more on the weather, in my experience, in my experience, I think the weather is getting warmer later into the year and continuing to stay cold all the way through May, if that makes sense, right? So it feels as if September is hotter than normal, October is hotter than normal, and even November, right? Does anybody else feel that? I mean, we could have, you know, 65 degree days in New York City in November. That is not uncommon. But you could have very frigid temperatures and wind and rain all the way into May in New York. It just really depends. Hey, Larry Van D, good to see you. So we're headed over to the east side. 
It's a beautiful day. This is right around the water here. Super peaceful here too. It's wild that you could be in crazy hustle and bustle of the city and then come to a place like this. You're in nature, but you're surrounded by the city. You can see the Deutsche Bank Towers here, one Central Park West and 15 Central Park West. It's unbelievable. During the summer, all right here, you can see hundreds of turtles swimming around. It's pretty cool. Uh, Mark says, Tom, how much is a rental in that building? Well, it really depends. You could get a place there for you know twenty thousand dollars a month and you can get a place there for twenty nine hundred dollars a month it really just depends like studio apartments go for around three thousand I think you could probably get just a basic studio no view for around three thousand bucks but you know you're really paying for the location right if you're on Central Park South you're centrally located to everything you know, if you're a big runner like I am, you just quite literally step outside and you can have an entire, arguably one of the best running paths ever, which is right here at Central Park. Wow, Jennifer, whew, says the flood came halfway up to my shed. Things flooded a lot yesterday, um, particularly in lower Manhattan. A lot of the basements, I always tell you guys, a lot of the basements flood like crazy in New York. So if you're moving to the boroughs, okay, I'm gonna give you guys a little thing to pay attention to. If you're moving to Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, or even, even in Manhattan, I'll just blanket it all over the place. You gotta make sure you do the diligence, even if you're moving into a rental on a ground floor or a basement. Number one, I would say if it's a basement apartment, I personally would skip it, find something else. That's just me. Um, it's up to you, you can do whatever you want, but the last thing you want is just a crazy rainstorm and then you have like a waterfall throughout your basement and then all your stuff is destroyed. I don't think that's worth it to save, you know, three, 400 bucks on the rent. So I'd say stay away from basement apartments. That's, that's the issue with a lot of restaurants too, particularly Soho, Tribeca area. Because the restaurant, a lot of times their kitchen and their prep area is in the basement. And that floods like crazy. And it destroys a lot of the product, a lot of the food, which we saw yesterday. We saw that one restaurant was actually pumping the water out of their basement. This is one of my favorite views, guys. Look at this. Isn't that incredible? You can really get a different perspective of 157. Now that it's sunny out, you can see all the different curves and architectural design on the building. And the building with the gold top, this one, that is 106. Central Park South. But what do you guys think? It's, I think Central Park is beautiful. And then you're looking up at the Steinway Tower. Hey, 
hey Sharon what's going on Johnny says do you still skateboard much not as much as I used to honestly um, mainly because everything is back I mean New York City is a hundred percent back in terms of vehicle traffic and also I'm old now <laughs> So the risk reward just doesn't really do it anymore. You know, when I was in my early 20s and teens, I was buzzing in and out of cars. I mean, I was nuts. I was insane. Um, but I don't know. I can't, I can't whip in and out of cars anymore on the, on the skateboard. Too many accidents. And yes, and uh, last year was the deadliest year for cyclists in the city. So when I'm in Florida, I'll skateboard on my block, but I don't want to skateboard in the streets in New York anymore. I think those days are over for me. It only takes one crazy driver and then, you know, and then you're out of here. Oh, this building right here? This is the Park Lane Hotel. That's a really good hotel if you're looking for a more affordable option directly on Central Park South. So you have the Park Lane Hotel here. You have the Ritz Carlton right here. Ritz Carlton, you're gonna pay you know over a thousand bucks, but you can get something at Park Lane for under four hundred dollars. And during the pandemic, they closed. I should say they temporarily closed the hotel down for renovations. So it's all brand new in there. Um, it looks really nice. So if you want to stay on the park, but you don't want to pay you know, the Ritz-Carlton prices or the Trump International Hotel prices, Mandarin Oriental, right, $1,000 plus. You can get a really nice room there, and it's quite a nice hotel. And I guess you could argue interested in hearing a little bit about the history of the pond here at Central Park. We'll have to come back here probably the end of May and do a daytime live stream inside the park just to give you a different perspective. It's kind of like a comparative analysis of what kind of the trees and the environment look like now and then compare it to what it looks like when it's full in bloom. And how can we forget the Plaza Hotel? I totally forgot about that one. The Plaza is right here. Hey, NAV407, good to see you. Meld, what's going on? Yeah, we are in Central Park and it is quite beautiful. It's a bit cold though, not gonna lie, but at least it's not three inches of rain like it was yesterday. But good to see you. Thanks for joining us. The AUS Fly Girl is here. Happy Sunday, everybody. Now, if you're ever walking up and down Park Avenue on the northernmost side of Grand Central Station, they plant hundreds, literally hundreds of these tulips. They're not in bloom yet, but we'll definitely check it out on the stream when they are. This tree is almost, almost in full bloom. Let's see how the wide angle lens looks. What do you guys think? Thumbs up or thumbs down on the wide angle lens? Optima 17, what's up? Now the building directly behind the plaza, that's where I think Tiger Global is, which is one of the Tiger Cubs hedge fund. Now the person who really invented hedge funds is Julian Robertson. I'm sure you guys have all heard of him. Uh, if you're interested in the hedge fund business or you're just interested in finance in general, uh, you really got to do some research into 
Julian Robertson and how successful his hedge fund was. And the other ones of the hedge fund, the type walking over the bridge here. And this is one of the most photographed points of Central Park right here. All right, let's head back over to the west side. We'll cut through the park. Lemonades as the sound is going in and out. Maybe because it's windy. It doesn't seem like it, but the wind is crazy right now. Let's go back to the regular angle. I used to run this path all the time. What do you think? Should we should we just walk the entire path all the way around to the west side? Eh, okay, you might as well. So you guys can see it. This will take us all the way around by Sheep Meadow. I don't know how good the internet is though, but we might as well try.
If you follow this path all the way up and you veer off just slightly to the left, that's gonna take you to the Bethesda Fountain, which, I mean, that part of the park is unbelievable. That's one of my favorite places. I filmed a standalone video there the other day in 4K if you guys want to see what it looks like. I'll turn the camera to the right and you can see the beautiful view of all of the Upper East Side of Manhattan. I mean, look at that. It's kind of like something you'd see out of a calendar, like those New York City calendars. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, five bags of popcorn. I believe it's about six miles all the way around. Now over here, you have kind of like a children's playground. And you have the baseball slash softball fields over there too. This stream is getting me excited for the summer. I don't, I don't think you guys realize how wild, in a good way, the summer is gonna be this year in New York City. Summer of 2024 is going to be insane. But if you guys are enjoying the stream so far, feel free to leave a like on the video and click the subscribe button if you're new. We usually do these streams every day starting at 8.30 p.m., but on occasion we do it during the day. R2-D2 says I'm with you. Yeah, I could, I could feel it. I could literally already feel it. That dog was adorable, the one that that lady was holding. This is the carousel. Sabrina Ferris, Tom, you anticipate tourism in the record numbers. I think the summer of 2024 is going to blow the doors off of every expectation in terms of tourism, uh, hotel occupancy, it's, I, that's my prediction. I think it's going to be rocking. And we have some data to kind of show us this. Now, we wrote about it briefly in the newsletter. Look at all these hotel stocks, right, charging into new all-time record highs. And earnings have been great, and also the projections for earnings have been really, really great. So if you look at Hyatt, ticker symbol H, if you look at Marriott, I believe ticker symbol MAR, the CEOs are forecasting 100% normalization in terms of the return to pre-pandemic business travel. And I think that's gonna kind of give New York those tailwinds. All right, let's, uh, mm, should I take you guys to the fountain? I'll try, but the internet's probably not good. So we're gonna be buffering in a big way. Hey, condo, since today is such a better day, 
uh, but it's still super cold. I know. Ye I mean, yesterday was crazy. I had full weather gear on, but I was absolutely soaked. That was one of the largest rain events I've ever been out in. It was like five hours. question, right? Uh, I don't think we can go up that way. There's no internet. Let's see if the internet is any better over here. Hey, NMB45, what's up? Says they should replace those fences. Yeah, the reason why they don't do that, um, is actually like a safety reason, I guess. But I agree. They want everybody to go through one specific entrance to get into Sheep Meadow. Guys, check this out. Now this is a spot on view of 220 Central Park South and Central Park Tower. This you can really see the whole gravity of these buildings. Hey, Michelle Henry, what's up? American Creed says, Tom, I thought there were high-end residential home slash condos at the opposite end of Central Park. So you're talking about 110th Street, kind of by Cathedral Parkway. So there, there is, I wouldn't really consider them ultra luxury, but they're nice. Uh, maybe we'll have to do another walking tour up there. Maybe I'll film that this week. Uh, but yeah, particularly at Cathedral Parkway, so Central Park West, where it meets the very end of Central Park to the north side, which is 110th. Those are all brand new buildings, condos, mixed use, really nice. It didn't used to be like that at all. So you're, you're correct. I'd say they're luxury, but not like ultra high end, but they are very nice. So we're coming up on a very famous part of the park. Does anybody want to guess what this is before I tell you? This is one of the most, I would say one of the most famous parts of Central Park, this building right in front of us. And it almost closed down for good. Thank God it didn't. Anybody want to have a guess? We'll take a quick walk around.
I have to plug in my phone. Ah, condo. Yeah, luxury apartments are along the High Line. So beautiful, for example, the Lantern Building. Yeah, so Steve Gold is on that building, the Lantern Building. Uh, we have a listing. We have a really, really nice building if you guys want to check it out and support. That's just a block away from the Lantern Building. Hold on, I gotta pull off to the side and plug in my phone before the phone dies. We'll pull off right here. All right, brief intermission. We should be ready to rock. Hey, you guys are right, Tavern on the Green. Ryan says, know of any publicly traded companies that have large holdings of New York City hotels? Yeah, I mean, all the main hotel chains like Hyatt, Marriott, Hilton. So Hilton, ticker symbol HLT, Hyatt, ticker symbol H, Marriott, ticker symbol MAR. All of them operate in New York. But if you guys are enjoying the Central Park Walk, feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. We do these streams every day, usually at nighttime, but occasionally we'll pop on during the day. All right, let's cross here. Oh, here, I'll show you guys something cool. That's the finish line of the New York City Marathon. <laughs> Todd and Tara, what's going on? This is where I'd be live tonight. Probably, I have to go to a dinner. Uh, but hopefully I'll be on. Hey, Justin Steer, say hey, Tom like the daytime stream. Yeah, it's, dude, it's an amazing, amazing uh, day out, thank God. Yes, Bryant Park, they just rolled out the grass at Bryant Park, so. Uh, check in on how business is. Yeah, Central Park doesn't have the best internet, but... We're gonna bump right into the Dakota building or the Dakota apartments. And you can see the Dakota right here, this building. Strawberry Fields is just off to your right.
All right, so we're now crossing Central Park West, right outside of the Dakota. There's some contacts, that's how far we've came. Hey, Tracks 101. Yeah, we're checking out the Dakota today. It's an amazing architectural marvel here. This is the main front entrance. And you have those beautiful original gas lamps too. Now, does New York actually look that different from our nighttime live streams in comparison to the daytime? I'm sure you could see way more architectural detail during the day. Could you imagine having a spot here at the Dakota? Looking right at the uh, park. You'll notice a lot more buffering through Central Park. There's really no cell phone provider that will work for streaming inside the park. Right, here we are at Columbus Avenue. If you continue to walk up, you'll reach the Museum of Natural History. And if you walk down, it'll run you right into Columbus Circle. But check out all the architecture up here, pre-war, Lots of red brick, fire escapes, looks really nice. Now I would take you to my favorite coffee shop of all time, but there's no internet there. It's right across the street. We'll give it a try anyway, but once we cross to the other side of 72nd, this is a big dead zone here. It is right to the right or the left. Black press coffee. Ooh. 
Ooh, man, the wind is crazy up here. Hey, crypto meme, what's up? Checking out the Upper West Side of Manhattan before I have to go to work. So thank you so much for joining us. Lots of people out today. Now the Upper West Side is a very, very good place to live if you have kids and a family. You can see all those beautiful brownstones. Because you know, in Midtown Manhattan, maybe not the best place to, uh, you know, raise kids, raise a family, but here it's quieter, you're near Central Park, but you also have Riverside Park too. All right, let's cross. Grand Street once is multi-million dollar brownstones are good for families. Yeah, they're very good for families. Look at how beautiful they are. Stunning that is. Let's see if we can zoom out. think it's a very good neighborhood for kids because you not only have Central Park but Riverside and it's much quieter much much quieter than Midtown with tons of through traffic Wow, look at these. Really amazing architecture.
Now, these trees are all barren, obviously, but when they come in, they fill in really nice and they create a really cool canopy. So it stays very cool in the summer. This is the kind of architecture I like. Anybody want a bottle of wine? Sometimes people will leave out like books and things that they don't want when they're moving out or selling their place. Look at how beautiful this is. All right, let's go back down and we'll check out another block. Lori's sisters the downstairs are separate. Yeah, some of them are multifamily. Right? There's a lot of studios here. There's a lot of one bedrooms. It just really depends. Some of them are full entire houses, but most of them are individual apartments, right? So if you're looking at something like this or like this, many of them have like three or four families in one. One lives on the ground floor, one lives on the second floor, third floor, and the fourth floor. Some of them are studios, some of them are two bedrooms. Some people that are really wealthy buy the whole thing and they live in the entire house. It just really depends. This one I love, look at that. I don't know, I'd love to live in one of those, but I also like a view. I like looking out over Central Park in New York City, you know, just like the big skyscrapers. All right, this is by the Museum of Natural History. Pretty close to it anyway. So this is 77th Street, Central Park West. And you're gonna see a lot of vendors. I think there's a big flea market that goes on, like a farmer's market. And this is the Museum of Natural History, which is one of my favorite museums in the city. They've also just added a brand new addition to the museum. Right, here it is. This is the New York City's Museum of Natural History. Amazing place. <laughs> Someone says after the age of 30, you need parking. Yeah, you know, I'm actually selling some parking spaces on the Upper East Side of Manhattan for $175,000 a space.
We only have four left. We've almost sold all of them. We sold two for 140. Those were the smaller spaces. And three for 180. Now we have the 175. No, excuse me. Three for 160, and now the 175 spaces are available. It's in a private self park garage. I think I've showed you guys before. Hey, Monty, what's up? Yeah, we're checking out the Upper, upper West Side. We almost never get a chance to come here. Now this building that you see is the brand new exhibit. This is brand new. Deborah says that's not the normal annual cost of a parking space. Uh, I mean, we're in line with comps. We're in line. There's a garage on 90th Street where you can buy a space for 100,000, but you also have individuals that can rent in the garage. This is like for privacy, people that don't want any random person parking in the garage. They wanna have their own garage door opener. They wanna drive down, park their car, and that's what they want. Here, I'll zoom out. Debra says in my building in Dumbo is $500 a month. Yeah, that's, that's Dumbo, Brooklyn. And again, you're with, it's not a private garage, right? Like there's 22 spaces in the garage and everybody gets their own garage door remote and nobody's allowed in except their own vehicles. So it's a lot of people, honestly, a lot of the buyers have been people that want to winterize their supercars. And people that have chauffeurs and things like that. And also a lot of the doctors that work on the east side, they just want to drive in, park their car, not have to deal with the valet. So that's kind of what the clientele has been like. I love this building. This is the brand new Center for Science, Education, and Innovation. I think they did an amazing job. At first, I thought it looked a little bit awkward, but it's actually growing on me a little bit, the architecture. I like it. What do you guys think? I love Dumbo. I'm jealous. Dumbo is a great neighborhood. So many things to do in Dumbo, Brooklyn. I mean, the views are, are amazing. I love that. Love, love that neighborhood. It's one of my favorites in all of Brooklyn. sunshine after rain what's up wow is it a beautiful day out Chris, is this part of Central Park? No, it's not. This is the park that's interconnected with the museum and natural history. If you want to go to Central Park, you just have to continue to walk all the way to the east. Or just walk east, and right here is Central Park West. So once you cross Central Park West to the east side, you'll be inside 
Central Park. There's a really nice dog park just to the right. But I don't know, what do you guys think? See, it's quieter up here. It's a more slower paced, relaxed way of life than being in the middle of everything in Manhattan, in you know, Midtown Manhattan. It's nice, it's a nice change. I'm glad you all are able to see it during the day. Here you have the dog park. Now this is the planetarium. I used to come here as a kid. Chris says you gotta take us through Harlem one of these days. On the first 70 degree day we have, I will. You'll start to notice and, you know, for those of you who've been watching the streams for the past few years, once the weather gets nice out, that's when we kind of branch out into other neighborhoods. Like, for example, we almost never come to the Upper West Side, only when it's warm out. Our hibernation phase is in the winter. We hibernate to Central Park South, Midtown Manhattan, and Billionaire's Row. But the spring is almost here, so we are going to be coming out of our cave, so to speak. This summer is going to be fun, trust me. If you guys are subscribed to the channel, we're gonna see so many cool things. Uh, I'm gonna take you to a lot of interesting construction sites. It's gonna be a fun summer, I can promise you that. We'll take the ferry again. Sunday night, I think we'll reintroduce our Staten Island ferry streams. So in the summer, every night, we take the ferry. Staten Island, come back. It's always fun. It's just in the winter, can't do it, can't do it. Too cold, too dark. Theodore Roosevelt Park. You can get the B and C trains. 81st Street Museum of Natural History. Monty says, what's my favorite season of the year? Summer. I like 80 degrees, hot, humid, every day. If it could be 90 degrees in just an absolute swamp every day in New York, I would choose that. That's what I like. Hi right, everybody, but I hope, hopefully you enjoyed the stream. Uh, I have to go to work, unfortunately, but we will be back tonight for our Market to Look Ahead live stream, regular scheduled programming. So feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see all of you back here at 8.30 p.m. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Be safe. Wishing you all the best. So thanks so much. And we'll see you in a few hours here. I gotta just go to a listening pitch, maybe get a coffee and then prepare for tonight's live stream. We have a lot to talk about, a lot to cover on the week ahead on Wall Street. All right, take care everybody. Thanks. Uh, Richard, Mark, Elizabeth, 
Sunshine After Rain, Susanna Q4, Monty, Daniel, Lance, Muhammad. See you guys tonight.